Hello everybody, this is Mikhail Pogosian from AUA with probability lecture number 29. Today we're gonna talk about uh, identically distributed random variables and we'll talk about joint distribution. In particular we will talk about how to describe joint distributions by using joint CDFs and then we're gonna talk about discrete joint distribution discrete random vectors and describing that uh, distribution of discrete random vectors through their joint PMF. So first let's talk about identically distributed random variables. So we already met uh, several times random variables with the same distribution but different random variable. Say uh, we have met these kind of things that x and y are uniform in 0, 1, but x and y are not coinciding, are not the same functions, not the same random variables. Well, uh, so if we are writing x and y are uniformly distributed over 0, 1, that doesn't mean that x and y coincide at every point omega. Of course, if they are coinciding, at every point, then they will have the same distribution. But the inverse is not true in general. And uh, this is because when we talk about random variables, then we are interested uh, about the values of that random variable first. We are not concerned, we are not interested at which point they are taking that values, but instead we are interested, we are concerned with which probability they are taking that values. What is the probability that they are taking that particular values? So this is very important. And this is uh, the, the phenomenon behind having uh, different random variables with the same distribution. So one example, uh, let us give examples of random variables x and y such that x is not the same as y and they are different random variables, but they have the same distribution, say Bernoulli 0.5. x and y have the same distribution. So we'll consider two types of examples. The first type of examples concern uh, the cases when x and y are defined on completely different sample spaces. So it can happen that x and y have the same distribution, but x and y are uh, defined on different sample spaces, different experiments. And type 2 example, it can happen that x and y are defined on the same uh, probability space, on the same sample space, but they are not equal, uh, although they have the same distribution. So uh, we will consider these two types of examples. So first type of example, uh, I want to give examples of X and Y de defined on different experiments, different sample spaces and having the same distribution. Say we are tossing a fair coin and X is zero if heads appears and X is one otherwise. So our sample space is heads and tails and X at heads when heads appears the value of x is 0, and when tails appears, the value of x is 1. Uh, and of course, because we are talking about a fair coin, the probability that x is 0 is the same that the probability of having heads, it is 0 0.5, and the probability that x is 1 is again 0 0.5. Of course, in this case, we will have that x is Bernoulli 0 0.5. So, uh, x is taking two values, 0 and 1, with probability 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, the next experiment is the following. So we are picking a random at, uh, picking a number at random from this set. Uh, uniformly, so equi uh, probability, uh, the probability that I will choose 1 is 1 over 4, the probability that I will choose 2 is 1 over 4 again, etc. So let y be 0, if the number chosen is less than 3, so it is either 1 or 2, and y be 1 otherwise. So if I am choosing, if my uh, number chosen is 3 or 4, then y is 1. Then uh, our 
sample space is one, two, three, four, all possible outcomes. And y at point one and two is zero. So by definition, if the number chosen was one or two, the value is zero. And y is one at three and four. And the probability that y is zero is when I will choose either one or I will choose two. And the probability of choosing either one or two is one half because we have a probable case. And the probability that y will be one is the same as choosing three or four and choosing three or four is with probability 0 0.5. So we will have again Bernoulli random variable. So y is again Bernoulli because it is taking values only zero or one with probability 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So we will have x and y are Bernoulli with pro parameter 0 0.5, but we cannot even check that x omega is equal to y omega since they are defined on uh, very different uh, sample spaces. Say, uh, if I will ask, is it true that x of 1 is equal to y of 1? Well, y of 1 is defined, but x at 1 is not defined. x is defined only at heads and x is defined on tails. So I cannot calculate this, etc. So uh, even if x omega is not equal to y omega, they are de uh, defined on different sample spaces, but they have the same distribution. So x and y are different random variables with the same distribution. Now type 2 example. Uh, again, I want to bring uh, two random variables, which are defined in this case on the same experiment, have the same distribution, Bernoulli 0 0.5, but uh, are not equal to each other. They do not coincide. Say our experiment is rolling a fair die. So this is our sample space. And we consider the following two random variables. So x is 0 if the number shown is even, and x is 1 otherwise. So we will have x at 2, 4, 6 is 0. For even numbers, it is 0. And for odd numbers, it is 1. So at 1, at 3, at 5, the value of x is 1. And clearly, uh, the probability that x is 0 is when we will have 2 or 4 or 6 in the outcome, and the probability of that is 0 0.5. And the probability that x will be 1 is again 0 0.5. So x is Bernoulli with parameter 0 0.5. Now uh, I'm defining on the same experiment, I'm defining y. Let y will be 0 if the number chosen is prime. So we are choosing at random a point here or rolling a die. If the number here uh, is prime, then y is 0. Otherwise, y is 1. So because only 2, uh, 3, and 5 are primes, by the way, uh, 1 is not prime number, so y2, y3, and y5 are 0, and y at points 1, 4, 6 is 1. So the probability that y is 0 is when we will have either 2 shown, or 3 shown, or 5 shown, and the probability of that is 0 0.5. And of course, the probability that y is 1 is again 0 0.5. So y is again Bernoulli with parameter 0 0.5. It is taking values only 0 and 1 with probability 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So uh, x and y are Bernoulli 0 0.5, but we do not have x omega equals y omega for any omega. Say at x at 4 is 0, but y at 4 is 1. So even we can calculate at every omega uh, the values of x omega and y omega because they are defined on the same experiment, on the same sample space, but they are not coinciding, although they have the same distribution. So x and y are different random variables on the same sample space with the same distribution. So uh, now we are giving a definition, we will use that identical distribution, uh, the notion of identical distribution later when we will talk about important uh, limit theorems. So 
we will say that x and y are identically distributed and we will denote that by id identically distributed if they have the same cdfs so the cdf of x is coinciding with the cdf of f at every point x where f uh, of x is the cdf of x and this is the cdf of y and it can be seen that if x and y are discrete random variables then x and y are identically distributed if they share if they have the same pmf and if x and y are continuous then they will be identically distributed if and only if uh, the pdfs will coincide for almost all points x examples say uh, when we are writing x and y are normally distributed with 0 1 parameter 0 1 this means that x and y have the same distribution they are standard normal random variables they are identically distributed but that doesn't mean that x coincides with y that x and y are the same maybe even x and y are uh, defined on completely different experiments Okay, example, when we are writing x, y is coming from this PMF, so it is taking x and y are taking values 0, 3, 7 with this probability, then x and y are ID random variables, identically distributed random variables. And what is important, if we have two identically distributed random variables, x and y, then for any a, uh, we will have that the probability that x is in A is the same as the probability that y is in A. Say, if for this example I will calculate, I will ask what is the probability that x is larger than 4. Well, you need to calculate x is larger than 4. That means x is taking the value of 7 and the probability of that is 0 0.2. And if I will ask what is the probability that y is larger than 4, you will give the same result. You will get the same result. And note that for the above examples, x and y can be defined on different sample spaces. Say x can be defined on, uh, say, die play when rolling a die, and y can be on completely other experiment. Okay. So, examples, assume x is uniformly distributed over 0, 1, and y is equal to 1 minus x. So, then it is easy to prove that y is again uniform with parameter 0, 0.1. So, you know how to do transform for random variables. If you will calculate the distribution of 1 minus x, you will obtain again uniform 0, 1. So, x and y have the same distribution they are identically distributed but x is not equal to y uh, for any omega i mean so another example by the way x can be equal to y only when uh, 1 minus x is equal to x so let me write 1 minus x is equal to x and this happens only if x is 1 over 2. And the probability that x will be 1 over 2 is 0. So for sure, with probability 1, we will have that x is not equal to y. Okay. So if x is normal with parameter 0, 1, and y is the negative of x minus x, then it can be proven that y is again normal with the same parameters 0 and 1. This is because our distribution, our PDF is symmetric around 0. So x and y are identically distributed. So you can try to use that transforms uh, formulas to obtain the distribution of minus x and to show that it is again normally distributed with parameter 0, 1. Now, note that in these two examples, x and y are defined on the same sample space because I'm using explicit formulas how y is calculated by using x, y is calculated by using x, 
then y and x are defined on the same uh, sample space. Well, of course, I do not know what is the sample space behind this random variable or that random variable, but that is not so important. I know how to calculate probabilities uh, with respect to x because I know its distribution. So this much about identically distributed random variables. Let's start our talk about joint distributions of random variables. So up to this point, we have considered uh, distributions of one random variable. And now we want to start talking about two or more random variables. So usually, oh, not usually maybe, but in many cases we are concerned uh, in the distribution about the distribution of two or more random variables. Define it on the same sample space, on the same experiment. So a very important question is how two or more random quantities, random variables, are related to each other. For example, uh, we can talk about how the height and weight of a person are related to each other. So here the experiment is to choose a random person and random variables are the height and the weight of that person. So if you will fix a person, uh, well, of course, uh, that person will have some height, some weight, uh, fixed numbers. Okay, we are not talking about that person. We are talking how height and weight are related in general. So for a random person in mathematical terms, in probabilistic terms. Now, how the AUA entrance math exam grade and the first year GPA are related. Again, our experiment is to choose a random student from AUA and random variables are the entrance uh, math exam grade and the first year GPA. Again, we are talking about general case, about generic uh, student uh, randomly chosen from the cohort of all students. Okay, another example. So how the education years and salary are related or how the education year, probability, course grade and salary are related. Here we have three random variables or how the daily Facebook and Google maximum prices are related to each other, etc. So we can give a lot of e examples of this sort. So uh, in our next few lectures, we will consider um, several random variables, mostly two random variables. <coughs> Sorry, we will talk about the bivariate case and we will uh, give some methods. We will study how to calculate probabilities and measure relationship uh, between two random variables. <coughs> Sorry. So we will talk about uh, mainly the distributions, distributions of two random variables. Uh, later we will give in few lines generalizations for n random variables. Now assume x and y are two random variables defined on the same experiment on the same probability space omega. So we will say that xy is a two-dimensional random vector defined on that experiment. Uh, sometimes we are writing vectors, random vectors in this form, well, and sometimes we are writing in that form. So uh, xy is a random vector for two or more random variables. The main problems we want to consider are the following. So this is for two dimensional case, of course, X and Y. Given a set, uh, a subset in R2A, we want to uh, calculate this kind of probabilities. We want to be able to calculate this kind of probability. So probability that XY is in set A. Say we will have this kind of graph so this is x, this is y, this is y. We will have some set A, say this is A, and we will ask what is the probability that my random point is here. So this is x, y, random point. Okay. So the next 
uh, important question we want to answer is the following. How X and Y are related to each other? Later, we will talk, we will give a measure for this, for the relationship between X and Y. But uh, today we're gonna mainly talk about this problem. Describe the distribution of pairs of random variables or random vectors, two dimensional random vectors, and uh, calculate this kind of probabilities. So, we want to describe joint distribution of two random variables. We recall that for one dimensional case, uh, the case when we had just one random vector, we were describing the distribution of X by using either its CDF, and this was working, this method of CDF was working for any random variable, uh, discrete, continuous, singular, and in the discrete case, we can also describe the distribution, distribution of X by giving its PMF, probability mass function, or in the continuous case, we can describe uh, the distribution by giving the probability density function, PDF. Now, similarly, in the analogy, uh, we will describe the joint distribution of random vectors through their, uh, through their joint CDF, so f, x, y, x, y. So this is the pair of our random variables. This is a pair of uh, two points, uh, well, two numbers in R or just a number in R2. Well, CDF method will work for any pair of random variables. So x can be discrete, y can be discrete, or they jointly can be continuous, or one can be discrete, the other one can be continuous, etc. So joint CDF method is working well for any case. Uh, unfortunately, uh, working with joint CDFs is not so easy. So we will use mainly, of course we will talk about this, but we will use mainly joint PMF and joint PDF method. So joint PMF, we will describe the distribution of our pair xy random vector xy by giving joint pmf if x and y are both discrete and to their joint pdf if they are uh, jointly continuous so recall now i want to define the joint cdf for two random variables Re recall the definition of a one-dimensional cdf so if x is a random variable and the CDF of X is defined uh, by this way, by this formula. So the CDF value at the point small x is the probability that a random variable is taking values less or equal than x for any x from the real axis. And we are defining the joint CDF in a similar way. So the joint CDF of random variables x and y or uh, sometimes we are talking about CDF of a random vector x, y is the function defined in the following way. So the value of that function at the point small x, y is the probability that a random variable x is taking values less or equal than x and y is taking values less or equal than y for any x, y from R2. Sometimes I will write uh, x, y is in R2, or sometimes I will write x and y are in R. Okay, and sometimes when necessary, we are specifying that this is the CDF of a vector x, y. We are writing that uh, random vector here. Uh, and what I mean by this probability, by this comma, this means uh, we are calculating the probability that x is less or equal than x and y is less or equal than y. Okay? So, geometrically, what are we calculating? The joint CDF of x and y, this uh, function f, at the point x, y, is showing the probability that our random point x, y, random vector x, y, will fall into the region from minus infinity to x times minus infinity to y. So this is the probability that uh, x, y 
well, uh, by definition, let me erase and write it again. So by definition, we have f at the point x, y is equal to x, y, sorry, is equal to the property that random variable x is less or equal than x and y is uh, less or equal than y. And we can write this as the probability that our point x, y, this is less or equal than, our point x, y is in the region minus infinity times, uh, minus infinity to x times, times minus infinity to y. Well, this is the same as to write this. So we are calculating the probability that this point, random point x, y, is in this infinite rectangle. So let me show that on the graph. So this is the graph. So this point is x, the coordinate is x, this coordinate is y, so this is the point x, y. So uh, the value of f at the point x, y is equal to the probability that our point x, y will be in this region, in this infinite rectangle. By the way, in one dimensional case, what was showing f of x? f of x showing, uh, was showing the following. So if we are taking x, it was calculating, it was calculated what is the probability that uh, our random variable capital X is in this region from minus infinity to x. In this analogy, uh, we have a rectangle, infinite rectangle. So f of x, y is calculating the probability that our point will be in this rectangle. Now, some properties of joint CDF. If uh, capital F is the joint CDF of x and y, then f is between 0 and 1. Why is this? Because uh, f is a probability, probability of something, probability that x is capital X is less or equal than this, and Y is less or equal than that. So because it is a probability, it will be always between 0 and 1 for any X and Y. The second property is F at plus infinity, plus infinity, when X is tending to plus infinity and Y is tending to plus infinity, then the value of F is 1. So why is this True, let me give the idea, this is not a proof, but the idea is the following. So by definition, we had that f at x, y is the probability that x is less or equal than x and y is less or equal than y. Now I'm plugging plus infinity here and plus infinity there. So plus infinity, plus infinity. So this will give the probability that uh, x is less or equal than plus infinity and y is less or equal than plus infinity, sorry, plus infinity. So, uh, of course, for any values of x and y, this will hold. So this will give just the probability of whole sample space. For any omega, this will be less or equal than plus infinity and this will be less or equal than plus infinity. And the probability of omega is 1. So this is the idea of that. And f at x minus infinity, if y is tending to minus infinity, the value is 0. Or if uh, x is tending to minus infinity, uh, this value is 0. f is tending to 0. So again, if I will try to uh, explain why is this working, not proof, but explain, then I will have the following. Say I'm calculating this. So this is the probability that x is less or equal than x and y is less or equal than minus infinity. Well, of course, no value of y will satisfy this. So this will give empty set. So 
I want to have the intersection of this with empty set. So I will have empty set. So this will give probability of empty set. And this is, of course, zero. By the way, we have the following difference here. So if I, I am taking X and Y, if both X and Y, if they are both tending to plus infinity, I'm getting one. If at least one of them is tending to minus infinity, then I have zero. Say, if this will tend to plus infinity, but this will not tend to plus infinity, then the limit is not one. And we will see what will happen if x will tend to infinity and y will be fixed. Later we will talk about that. Okay, the next uh, important property is the following. So for a fixed y, if I will fix y, then this function as a function of x is increasing and right continuous at every point. And if I am fixing x, then this as a function of y is increasing again and right continuous for any uh, po at any point. And importantly, two-dimensional joint CDF satisfies this inequality. So for any a less or equal than b and c less or equal than d, we will have this inequality. Well, I will give some explanation, geometric explanation and proof for this. But at this moment, uh, I want to just stress that if f is a joint CDF, then it satisfies all these properties. And a nice thing is that if we have f, capital F, satisfying all these properties, then it is a joint CDF of some random vector x, y. So there is, if we have function satisfying these properties, then there is a, uh, there is a random vector x and y such that f is the joint CDF of that x and y. Now, uh, let me explain the last inequality in that properties. So, recall that in one dimensional case, uh, if f of x is the CDF of our random variable x, then we can calculate uh, the probability that x is between a and b, including b and not including a, as the difference between fb and fa. So fb minus fa will give this probability. Now uh, let's uh, move to two-dimensional case. Capital F is the joint CDF of capital X and Y, random vector x, y. Then by definition, f of x, y is this probability. Now uh, we, we will obtain the following. We are calculating the probability that x is between a and b, including b and not including a, and y is between c and d, because we have two random variables, we are giving two conditions. So x is between this and that, and y is between the, the c and d. So uh, in other way, I can write as this the same thing as the following. So this is the probability that my point x, y is in the rectangle a, b times c, d. So this is the same as this probability. So I want to calculate what is the probability that my random point x, y will uh, fall into this rectangle. And we will have exactly the same quantity as in our previous uh, properties of joint CDF. And because, uh, well, I will give some explanation why this is working, of course, but because this is a probability and this is equal to that probability, then this needs to be larger or equal than zero for any a less than b and c less than d. So that's why uh, any joint CDF is satisfying this inequality because this quantity is a probability, probability that our random point x, y will fall into um, that rectangle. Okay, so this was some 
from the above properties that is why it is non-negative so first how to remember that inequality of course no need to memorize that but if you want to understand how this is obtained we can talk uh, we, we can give the following explanation say uh, we are calculating the probability that xy is uh, between uh, well xy is in this rectangle this is a rectangle x is between a and b and y is between c and d so what is the probability that my point xy will be here so to calculate that we are marking these vertices so this is point b x coordinate is b and uh, y coordinate is c. b c so b d a c a d so we have four vertices uh, these are the coordinates of that vertices we are calculating the values of f cdf at this point so f at b d f at b c f at a c and f at a d and we are giving plus sign to this and that and we are giving minus signs to this and that and we are obtaining the value of this uh, probability so fbd plus fac minus fbc with minus sign and minus fad so plus plus minus minus this is the pattern and we are obtaining this probability okay now about the proof geometric proof some idea uh, behind the proof uh, we want to prove that the probability that xy will be in that rectangle with sides a b and c d is that quantity two plus signs and two minus signs this vertex and that vertex are with plus sign and these two are with minus sign okay so let's start from the following let's see what is uh, denoting that f at bd f at bd is the probability that our random point xy will be in this infinite rectangle so x will be less or equal than b and y will be less or equal than d so this quantity is measuring the probability that our point will be inside this rectangle now i need to calculate this minus fad so f at ad is the probability that my point will be in this infinite rectangle so in this infinite rectangle if i'm calculating the difference between fbd and fad probability is here probability my point is here minus the probability my point is here then i will obtaining the probability that my point xy is in this infinite well in fact it, this goes to infinity infinite uh, this half strip okay now i need to calculate minus f at bc this is the point bc so f at bc is the probability that my point will be here so i'm calculating minus f at bc so i'm taking out this part and i'm getting this part with minus sign so what is showing this uh, quantity this sum maybe it is showing the probability that my point will be here minus the probability that it will be here with minus sign okay and finally if i will add f at ac this is the point f at ac i'm adding the probability that my point will be in this uh, infinite rectangle and after adding that i had one with minus sign and what with plus sign i will have just this left so this sum is giving exactly the probability that my point will be here this is a nice geometric interpretation of this formula okay now one remarkable fact having the joint distribution of xy this vector 
we can find individual distributions of x and y. So I can talk about the distribution of x individually, separately, the distribution of y. Which values are x taking, what are the probabilities, etc. What is the distribution of that uh, values? Uh, and also we can talk about the relationship between x and y. We will talk about the relationship between x and y later. Uh, let's, so, uh, let's see how we can calculate the distribution, how we can determine the distribution of x and y having the distribution of this pair. So we are considering the following problem. Uh, assume we have the joint CDF of x and y, f, x, y. Find the CDF fx of x and find the CDF fy of y. The CDF of y, CDF of x through the joint CDF of x and y. By definition, the joint CDF fxy of x and y is defined as the probability that x is less or equal than small x and y is less or equal than that small y. <laughs> now, uh, we want to calculate the CDF. We want to find the CDF of x. So we want to find this. And we want to find the CDF of y. So we want to find this for any values of x. Now, I want to express this in terms of that. So I have this. I want to obtain this. So how to obtain that? I can write the following. So probability that x is less or equal than x is just probability that x is less or equal than x and y is arbitrary. And because y is arbitrary, I can just add y is less or equal than plus infinity. I can just, this is uh, giving omega, so the intersection of this with omega will give just this. <coughs> Sorry. Now, uh, I can express this in terms of joint CDF. So this is the value of joint CDF at x plus infinity. So if I want to find the distribution CDF of uh, x, capital X, I'm plugging y to be plus infinity. Similarly, if I want to calculate the CDF of y at the point small y, so if I want to calculate this, then I'm taking x is less or equal than plus infinity, this, uh, this holds for sure. So I will have, and this uh, can be written by using that joint CDF as f at plus infinity and y. So we have obtained the following result. Uh, the CDF of x is the joint CDF at the point x plus infinity for any x and the uh, CDF of y at the point y is the joint CDF when x is plus infinity for any y. And given the joint CDF f x y, the CDF f of x and CDF of uh, y f of y are called the marginal CDFs of x and y. Well, individual CDFs of x and y. They are called marginal CDFs. We will uh, see why it is called marginal. Now, this is uh, me this method is called marginalization. So, Ge uh, graphically, uh, geometrically, we will have the following. So, this is a graph of surface of joint CDF. Well, it is for bivariate normal random variable. Later, we will talk about that binomial uh, bivariate normal. Sorry. So you can see that it is, well, continuous in this case. If x or y are tending to minus infinity, so this is the direction of x-axis, this is the x-axis, 0, then 5, then 10, etc. This is the direction of this is the direction of increase for the y-axis. So this is the point 0, this is the point 5, this is the point minus 5, uh, etc. 
So y is increasing in this uh, direction and x is increasing in this direction. So if x will go to minus infinity, so if we will go, go this way, then our surface, our f is tending to zero. If we are going to, if y is going to minus infinity, so we are going this way, then it is going to zero again. If y and x are tending to plus infinity, so I need to look there. So at plus infinity, the height is one. So it is tending to one. And if I am fixing, say, uh, if I am fixing y, say, I am fixing this value of y, then along that line, my function is increasing and continues everywhere. If I am fixing x, say I'm taking this value of x, along that line in the direction of increase of y, so y is increasing. So, uh, sorry, not y is increasing. When y is increasing, our function is increasing too. So, our function is satisfying that properties. Well, uh, I cannot check that uh, last inequality with four numbers, sum with four numbers uh, geometrically, but uh, believe me, it is satisfies, satisfied because we are dealing with uh, joint C therefore some random variables real random variables okay so what i want to show i want to show here the marginal cdfs so this is the joint cdf graph so marginal cdfs marginal cdfs if i want to find the marginal cdf of random variable x i need to send y to plus infinity so y to plus infinity i need to find the projection of this what is the limit of this surface when y goes to plus infinity? And this is the limit of that. Well, I cannot draw the plus infinity here in computer, but this is the limit of this surface. And this is the CDF of x. And you can see that it has a shape of CDF. It tends to zero here, it tends to one at plus infinity. It is increasing, it is uh, continuous in this case everywhere. Okay, if I want to calculate the marginal CDF of y, fy, then I need to send y, uh, and sorry, I need to send x to plus infinity. So I need to look at, at the projection, at the limit uh, when x is tending to plus infinity at this wall and at that wall I will have this kind of shape and this is the CDF of y so it is again increasing let me recall that the direction of increase of y is this so it is increasing it tends to zero at minus infinity when y is minus infinity it is tending to one when y is plus infinity and uh, continues everywhere in this case. So these are the marginal CDFs and this is the joint CDF of our random vector XY. Now one not one remark having the joint CDF of XY we were able to find the individual CDFs of X and Y. This is easy. But unfortunately, the inverse is not true in general. Having the individual CDFs of X and Y, we cannot find the joint CDF of X and Y. And this is because Fx and Fy are giving information of X and Y separately but they are not giving any information about the relationship between X and Y, which is very important information. Later we will talk about this. Okay, now generalization. Joint CDF of N random variables. So uh, above we described the distribution of two random variables, X and Y. Uh, through their joint CDF. So the definition of the CDF was this one. 
Now assume that we have n random variables. We are denoting by x1, x2, xn. Define it on the same sample space. We denote by this bold-faced x, the vector with coordinate x1, x2, xn. So I'm writing it as a column vector, so xy, xn. So this is transpose sign. And call this x to be the n-dimensional random vector with coordinates xk. Now we want to describe the distribution of this random vector. Uh, to that end, we are defining its joint CDF uh, in the following way. So we are taking any n-dimensional point. So this is ordinary point from Rn. Well, we can have say 1, 0, 0, 0, n times 0, uh, n minus times 0, or 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, etc. So any point will work. We are taking any point, in fact. And defining the uh, value of joint CDF at that point x, or f x1, x2, xn, to be the probability that our first random variable is less or equal than that first value, uh, second random variable is taking values less or equal than x2, etc. xn is taking uh, values less or equal than that small xn. So this is straightforward. Uh, generalization for uh, n-dimensional case of this. And having the joint CDF of random variables x1 to xn, so this was that definition, we can find, say, individual CDFs of xk. So we can answer to the question, what is the distribution behind x1? What is the distribution behind x2? Say, the distribution or CDF of xk will be the following. So uh, except that xk, except the uh, variable at the place, kth place, uh, we are sending all others uh, to plus infinity. So, say if I want to find the distribution of x2, CDF of x2, I'm taking x1 here plus infinity, x3 plus infinity, xn plus infinity and leaving uh, the case place uh, with variable x. x is anything. Okay, and we can also calculate the joint CDF of any subgroup of random variables. Say the joint CDF of x1 and x3, so we have n random variables, I'm choosing say x1 and x3. If I want to find the joint distribution of that pair, x1 and x3, what I'm doing, I'm fixing the coordinate x1, x3 here, and sending all others to plus infinity. In that case, I will have the joint CDF of x1 and x3. I will do the same with x1, x2, x2, x5, etc. So I will, I will be able to describe all pairs, all triples, or etc. k tuples uh, through their joint CDFs. Okay, so we have talked about joint CDFs, although they are completely describing the distribution of two, well, in fact, also in more uh, random variables in, in n-dimensional case also, but unfortunately CDFs are not so useful to calculate probabilities of, the, of this form. So our aim was, first aim was to be able to calculate the probability that xy is in some subset and that subset is in R2. Well, we, uh, joint CDF is not helping except the cases when A is a rectangle or a union of disjoint rectangles, in fact. Why is that? Because, well, uh, let me just give the idea first for one dimensional case. So what was the uh, idea? F of X, the CDF in one dimensional case was calculating the probability that my point is here. Now having this kind of thing for any x, I can calculate 
what is the probability that uh, my point is inside AB? So what I was doing, I was doing the following trick. Say uh, the probability that my point is here is the same as the probability that my point is here minus the probability that my point is here. So uh, I can calculate this probability by using f. So this is f of a. And I can calculate this probability. This is f of b. So the probability that my point will be between a and b is fb minus fa. So in uh, and having uh, a, a, and being able to calculate probabilities in probabilities that x is inside some interval, we can calculate say what is the probability that it is uh, in the union of two intervals or you know union of more intervals, and we will be able practically to calculate any uh, probability. Uh, that is coming from practical problems. Okay, so why joint CDF in two dimensional case is not useful anymore? Because uh, two dimensional in two dimensional case, uh, what was showing, what was giving us that joint CDF, it was giving probabilities of this form. It was calculating the probability that our point will be uh, will be here, that our point x, y will be here. So this is the point with coordinate x, y. The, so f at x, y is calculating, f at x, y is calculating the probability that my uh, random vector x, y will be in this, uh, in this region. So if I want to be able to calculate uh, probabilities with different um, sets A, regions A, I need to be able to express this region by using that uh, infinite, half infinite maybe, uh, regions or rectangles, sorry. So uh, say if I will have this kind of shape, I cannot express this as union or uh, difference between this kind of shaped regions. So it is very hard. Well, we have seen that if we have just a rectangle, I can write this rectangle minus that rectangle minus that rectangle and plus this rectangle and that will give this region. But unfortunately, if I have, say, a disk circle, say, I cannot express this as a finite union or difference of these shaped uh, sets. That's why joint CDF is not so useful in tuned more dimensional spaces. So, uh, also, joint CDF is not so handy to find a relationship between X and Y. That's why uh, we are developing our theory of joint distribution by using joint PMFs for discrete case and joint PDFs for continuous case. So, <clears throat> again, let's go back to two-dimensional case. Uh, about the, we, uh, let's talk about the, the distribution of two random variables X and Y then we can have the following cases. Say so X and Y are both discrete. So they are jointly discrete. X is discrete, Y is discrete. In that case, we will describe the distribution through their joint PMF, probability mass function. It can happen that X and Y are jointly continuous. We will define what, is, what it means that they are jointly continuous and we will consider these random variables through their joint PDFs, probability density functions. Or it can happen that, say, X is discrete uh, and Y is continuous or vice versa. One is discrete, one is continuous. Or it can happen that, say, X is singular, Y is discrete or Y is continuous, etc. So, uh, fortunately, we will consider only these two cases. We will not consider these two. 
So let's talk about first uh, the joint distribution of discrete random vectors.